Okay, Chris Gorney, Mountain High Adventures. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Special guest today, Alex Honnold on the channel, and I've got him here with me to give us a description of this huge mega scrambling route that he just did through Red Rock Canyon. Welcome, Alex. Thanks, thanks. I'm like, oh, we're just standing in the desert. So I'm like, oh, and we're on, it's live. <laughs> here we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. this yeah. is it. Right, cool. um, I'd like to say, like, I'm super honored I got to be a part of this big effort that Alex did, and uh, it was this like huge couple of day effort that he did scrambling through the canyon here. So I just wanted to take a second to let him describe kind of what his vision was and what the effort turned out to be. Cool. So the vision was to go from one end of the range to the other, climbing as many classic routes and tagging as many summits as possible along the way in as uncontrived a way as possible. And it's it was complicated by the fact that if you're just trying to tag summits, then you know you can do what you've done in the past where you run between the summits and it's kind of like a big running adventure. And if you're just trying to climb routes, then it's normally better just to climb the route or pell down or hike down and then go climb another route. But if you're trying to do both, then it becomes this roller coaster ride across all the different peaks. And so that was the vision, but it took me a long time to figure out the best way to do it. Like, oh, there are the peaks. <laughs> like that's, well, actually, I mean, that's like half the range. And then it continues further south, but it's just hard to see. Yeah, so maybe to give a little perspective of the scope of this effort, um, can you tell us the stats? How big was it? Yeah, well, so in theory, or so the final, it took me 32 hours to do what I did. The final stats were somewhere between 35 and 40 miles of hiking and somewhere between 23 and 25,000 feet of vertical gain. And then <laughs> of that, uh, I did 14 classic climbing routes and each of those are big multi-pitches in the canyons. So I think it was something like 120 or 130 pitches of climbing. You know, probably like 10,000 feet of vertical rock climbing. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, so this basically combined an ultra marathon with multi-pitch rock climb free soloing and 32 hours worth of adventure time. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But like the stats don't really do it justice because the, the terrain is so hard to go up and down. And this, I mean, you know, going down each of those canyons is not like going down a nice trail. It's like jumping from rock to rock and like lowering off edges and dropping off things. And, you know, it's like so much jumping. Yeah, for anybody who's followed my channel in the past, you guys have seen some of the big routes that I've done through Red Rock and the scrambling, and you all know I'm always talking about how hard route finding is and how none of it's easy. And there's yeah. no there's no gimmies in Red Rock. You really got to work for yeah. it all. Yeah, so no gimmies. The the stats really don't um, shed light on how my, big my of an effort. Probably includes half the things you've had on your channel, right? Yeah. Like all the all the classic scrambles. Because the thing is, to get between the different peaks, you basically have to enchain all these different cool scrambles just like down Fern Creek and down the Wilson scramble and like all these things that are pretty classic scrambles in their own right but you just have to do them all together so uh, uh, during the 32 hour effort how many hours did you sleep oh so I didn't sleep the idea was just to do a continuous push uh, so I mean and you and you paced me through the night probably the worst part for me between sort of midnight to 5 a.m. felt pretty grim but then when the sun came back up felt a little bit better there yeah. still was kind of over it it was pretty tough um, those final hours yeah it's just like you know it's kind of going slower and grinding to a halt and but then still did epinephrine which is a classic sort of 2,000 foot climbing route at the end of the canyon so that was a nice little bookend to all the the rock climbing involved in the traverse would you say that was a highlight or if there was a highlight during the whole effort was there like a moment that stands out oh some of the highlights were earlier on actually the middle the main climbing is in that middle there sort of to the right of rainbow mountain and uh i mean i climbed dark shadows in 30 minutes or something i climbed a couple of very classic climbing routes very quickly in the middle of the day and i felt heroic and was like this is all so fast and fun and then by the end of the day it was decidedly less heroic it's more of a grind it's just like surviving <laughs> just to get through it yeah okay how about a uh, favorite snack during the traverse was there anything that just brought you around well so i mean the whole traverse is basically powered by uh, what are they? The Pro Bar bolts, the little blocks, the little gel yeah, blocks. Yeah, yeah, I really like those. But then by hour 16 or so, I could not eat more of them. And so then, I don't know. My wife was making me these little egg bagel things that were pretty good. I've had probably five of those on the traverse. Nice. I had some Oreos at one point. That kind of helped boost morale. <laughs> it was sort of like a easy go-to caloric bomb. Yeah. And it seemed uh, right before epinephrine, you had a bowl of mac and cheese. That's oh no, it's vegan mac. Yes, vegan mac. Some vegan mac, which. Uh, yeah, it went down easy, but that at that point, that was more than 24 hours in, and my stomach, I was like over it, felt terrible. And so I needed something super bland and kind of easy, and I just 
truffles. And then I ate a bunch of peanut M&M's randomly. <laughs> Which, again, just like easy calories to go down like reminds me of childhood. But. Awesome. And so, can you tell us the, the starting point and the ending point? Yeah, so I don't know if it's in the frame, but so I started at White Rock Peak. Or I think that's what it's called. But uh, the furthest north mountain. And then I ended at the highway at the south, so Highway 160. So uh, basically, all the summits in between. Except that when I got to the summit of Black Velvet Peak, which is the top of Up and Upper, the climbing route, then I cut back to the limestone and sort of hiked past the end. I had originally intended to do a couple more peaks past that, but they, they get less cool, and so it's decidedly like an easier and kind of dumber as you get to the end. And so ultimately I just walked around that section because I was totally over it, and the idea of going climbing through the next afternoon felt like a bit much. And like, I just don't like that part anyway. Yeah, it's a bit less interesting after having gone through like this whole section in the middle. Yeah, the middle section is such, you know, it's like world-class climbing, you know, destination worthy. And the thing is, nobody climbs on the routes at the end because they're just not as good. Basically. Yeah. You know, it's like there's a reason they're not as popular. It's because they're, they're just like not that good. And this is something I think is a little understated from Alex on this effort, but can you just tell us stylistically, um, I know you made a choice. So how many ropes did you use or touch during the effort? Oh yeah, yeah, none. None. No, so, well, none. So I was I was soloing the roots, and then on a lot of the scrambling descents and things, there are fixed lines in place, like little hand lines. And just out of principle, I skipped them all. Not that it makes any difference for me, but uh, just the it would be like a pure soloing, you know. I don't know. I like that. I was using little hand lines because I was like trying to film sometimes, and I was trying to keep up. <laughs> so I was using those hand lines. But I like that uh, choice that he just zero ropes. <laughs> don't yeah, need them. If you're going so long, you might as well go so long. Yeah. The thing is, it it cost me basically nothing to avoid those ropes. Yeah. Like uh, you know, Con considering the amount of ropeless climbing I was doing anyway, you know, when you pass all the little knotted hand lines, you're sort of like this is very easy compared to the rock climbing I was doing. So absolutely. It's, uh, yeah. But no, it's cool. It's a big outing. I mean, it's taken me sort of two years of effort to piece it all together, find the route, find the scrambling descents, learn all the trails. But it was nice though, it all really came together when I did it. It uh, it, it all worked, which is surprising. Yeah, it went together pretty well. Yeah, because each time I'd done a segment, like each time I'd done a single mountain by itself or, or a collection of a couple of routes, I'd come home feeling totally busted and all cut up and sunburned and just kind of destroyed. And I was like, man, it just, it just takes no prisoners. You know, it's just, it's all so hard. And then it was nice that on the actual day, the execution was pretty much perfect and it all it all worked uh, as far as like your pacing goes you were pretty much ahead of all your scheduled uh, splits right no i was ahead up for the first 16 hours then i started to actually i maybe was still ahead but um only because i built up a little lead at the beginning but basically the whole second half i felt very slow and decidedly less you know circle it's pretty gross like the section we did from uh, indecision peak to hidden peak and then down at the black velvet uh was Oh, was it? Before. I don't yeah. think I, had, uh, I knew that. Yeah, because when I did just that segment, you know, two weeks before, I had jogged most of it and was like, oh, it's so lovely, this is beautiful. <laughs> this is and, nice. then, and then when we were doing it at, <laughs> we're the, just at the morning of day two, I was like, oh, my knees, you know, I was like, I don't think I can run any of this. I thought I was dying. Yeah. But. Well, so I'll put some links down in the description of this video. Um, Alex is going to give me some info and hopefully we can maybe get like a track so that you guys can see like the actual path that he took through uh, Red Rock. And um, I'll link to anything else that it's sort of important to this effort. Um, we'll put that down in the description of this video and hopefully somebody will do it. Yeah, somebody else could yeah. go for the hurt. Um, what can we expect in the future? Is there going to be a video about this? There might be. I don't know. I mean, in theory, the, the folks from Real Rock uh, were filming, but like, we'll see if they do anything with the footage. We'll see. If, I mean, honestly, this interview is more than, than I did for any of that. Like, they don't have any of the details. They have no stats. Like, I don't know what they're going to try to make a film out of. We were but, filming Alex the whole effort, but yeah, it depend, we don't know what like, exactly really will come of it. Intermittently, you know what I mean? Cause yeah. we were with a bit. I mean, we narrated a bit. I had some videos where I'm like, I'm on the summit of this, I'm on the summit of that. But they didn't get a single shot of like, here's the objective, here's what we're trying to do. Right. Like, you know, here's what we did. Uh -huh. You know, it's like they just have little moments of like, now I'm climbing, now I'm on the summit of something. It's like there's no... I was like chasing you with the GoPro at times. Yeah. So. But I don't think there's any overview where I'm like, I am trying to do a traverse of Red Rock. So we'll see how they turn that into a film. Well, here's, a, here's some of the information. We're getting it out to the people. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, don't forget to smash that subscribe button <laughs> and uh, give the video a like or a thumbs up if you're a rock climber or an ultra runner. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Alex.
Yeah, cool. Right on.